So today we're going to cover the broad subject of parking garage design with precast pre-stressed concrete. Some of the things that we will cover um, will be the general parts, but let's get to the objectives of today's session. We want to provide an understanding of the functional considerations for precast pre-stressed concrete parking structures. We'll look at parking occupancy, site considerations, vertical communication in the structure, and fire ratings. Well, in the second part, we'll cover considerations of gravity load framing, vertical elements of the lateral force resisting system, and talk a bit about diaphragm considerations. Um, then we're going to get down into some of the details that are necessary to make a precast, pre-stressed concrete parking structure successful, considerations of warping, floor connections and joints, um, other connection considerations, uh, volume change effects, and some construction issues. So parking garages are generally classified as low hazard storage S2. There's a special section to cover parking garages in Chapter 4 of the IBC, Section 406, Motor Vehicle Related Occupancies. Within that section, garages are further classified as either open or enclosed. And we generally strive to meet the requirements for open parking structures whenever possible because the Requirements for an enclosed parking structure include sprinklers, positive ventilation, and there are other restrictions, uh, other provisions in the code that apply to an enclosed parking structure that are not applicable to open parking structures. Um, so generally speaking, if we can des design for the openness, the ventilation of an open parking structure, we're going to have a more economical and actually a more user-friendly structure. Notice that significant parts of Section 406 in IBC 2015, the current IBC adopted in most localities, uh, is marked with a vertical bar indicating changes from the last edition of the code. So it's important if you're going to work in the design of parking structures and you've done it before, it's probably a good idea to go back and take a look to see what, what has changed from the 2012 version. Um, what do you need to pay attention to? So functional design covers a whole range of different topics and different issues that need to be considered. Level of service is a way, a tag of, of trying to relate parking design to highway design, in a sense. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about that in detail. But parking structure types, um, ramping types, uh, different, uh, different approaches to the layouts, uh, things to be considered. Uh, revenue control and operating systems. Not all parking garages are free, and sometimes we've got to have ways to provide uh, for revenue and um, also to, to uh, include the operations of the garage, and those become systems that are specialized to parking. We have to consider street access design, circulation and ramping, parking configurations, pedestrian circulation, safety and security, lighting, graphics and signage, and fire protection and ventilation. Level of service is, again, a, a concept that is sometimes applied to try to develop guidelines for several of the aspects of detailed functional design in a parking garage. The table here of parking small, small uh, module widths, spaces, uh, overall modules. This is uh, a, a, a table that was derived from uh, a textbook on parking garages by Chris Smith and Bouillon. I want to give them credit. But level of service is generous, open, wide spaces, level of service A, B, good, C, average, D, tolerable. Um, largely, level of service or what 
is applicable to your layout and the functional design depends on who's using this. So parking garages are not something that's set out in a field, people use it, and, and that there's no other ancillary use. They're always in support of some other destination. Where are we going? What's this about? 